Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast is a Christ-centered podcast. Established in 2019 and hosted weekly by Pastor Chris Busher. Addressing a host of topics such as the Great Commission, Christian discipleship, and often featuring interviews with special guests who are experts in their field. The views and events expressed on this podcast and all related materials belong solely to their author and not necessarily to the author's employer, organization, committee, or other group or individual. While all attempts are made to present accurate information, some information may become outdated over time. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast makes every attempt to timely update any and all such information. Without further delay, here's another powerful episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Once again, my name is Dallas. Today, we have another podcaster joining us. Her name is Lydia Thomas, and she is the host of the podcast called Love My Sheep. And I don't know a lot about the podcast, but I do know where we're headed. We're probably going to be talking about Luke chapter 15, where Jesus is is leaving the 99 to get the one. And this is what we're supposed to do as believers in Christ. We're supposed to love the sheep. We're supposed to lead people to Jesus. And this is one of my favorite messages to preach in Brazil, in fact, is Luke chapter 15, where Jesus is talking about leaving the 99 to get the one. And as he's on his way to get the one, he says, follow me. Come with me to reach the one. Come with me to find more people to follow me. So this is a missions message here, but Lydia, it's such a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. We always allow our guests the opportunity to share a little bit of their personal story, why they're a believer and some other things like that. So Lydia, just go ahead. Tell us who you are, why you're a Christian and some other things along the way. Okay, great. So I was born and raised uh, on the east coast of Canada in a province called Newfoundland. And my father and mother moved there from India, as well as my sister. So they were all born and raised in India. I was the only one who was born and raised in Canada. So my father had a job as a teacher at a Pentecostal school in a small town of just 3,500 people in Springdale, Newfoundland. And uh, So I went to a Pentecostal school. So I grew up in church, in kindergarten, in school. They, uh, my teacher had us say the sinner's prayer at that time. And so uh, we did, we considered ourselves saying that age of four, but then as growing up, I remember in Sunday school, a friend of ours um, in my class brought to my attention and a few others that when we were four, we didn't know what we were doing at that time. So at 10, I rededicated my life to the Lord, and I considered that the age of when I really got saved and started following the Lord, and that's what made a difference to me at at 10 and realizing, oh, wow, I need to make this commitment to God. I need to um, surrender my life to Him. So it was at age 10, and I, you know, grew close to the Lord and fell off and just not was... I wasn't a fully committed person, basically straddling both paths, the broad and the narrow, um, especially through my teen years, just really influenced by a lot of people that were around me. Um, At age 14, my mom had passed away and my dad and I had moved to Ontario, Canada, and my dad remarried. And my dad had a failing kidney and it was my stepmom who donated her kidney. And my dad lived off that kidney for many years. Uh, And then he passed away in 2016. Uh, He became a pastor after he retired as a teacher. And the church has always been a part of my life. And uh, he was just very committed to God. And I just saw his example around me and we were very close and that relationship. And I just had a love for people. I always had a love for people at a very young age. So yeah. I knew that I would just get into a ministry dealing with people and helping people. And exactly. that kind of led into where I am now. I did work in the insurance industry and I worked in that for 21 years. And I thought that's where I would retire. And it wasn't until last year. And I knew God was going to call me out. I just didn't know when. And I felt God leading me out and to start a grief ministry. And I'm in the infant stages, just waiting on him and how to go about that. But the podcast was the first chapter. That's something he had showed me. So 
uh, this is where I am now. And with the Love My Sheep uh, and how that title came to be uh, was actually in the fall when I felt the Lord pressing me to um, come out. And I wasn't quite sure. And I wasn't getting the direction. I was praying about it. And I asked him, what should I do? And he just kept pressing on me to love his sheep. And the same intensity that Jesus had told yeah. Peter to feed, it was the same intensity. And I thought, okay. So I just I just poured love into people and I just kept doing that and just Good. meeting with people and talking to people and listening to what they were going through, especially they were coming off a pandemic and people have gone through so many challenges after being isolated yeah. for so long. And I, I, could, I should have seen at that point that this is where God was going to steer me to help the grieved specifically, uh, not just the bereaved, but also the people who are just struggling with so yeah. many losses. And uh, that's where I am now with yeah. that. Thank you. Thank you. And you said grief ministry. So can you just walk us through what what is grief ministry? What makes up this? How do we find healing through it? Of course, it's through Jesus. But what is your strategy? How do you you work through that? You're listening to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. We'll be right back after this quick word from our sponsors. Are you looking to deepen your relationship with God? Tune in to the Word of God by M Podcast, hosted by Manny. Explore scripture and engage in insightful discussions and inspiring interviews that will help you apply the wisdom and truth of the Bible to your everyday life. Available on all mainstreaming platforms, this podcast is perfect for longtime Christians and those just starting to explore their faith. Join us each week as we learn to live more intentionally, love more deeply, and walk more closely with God. Introducing June's Faith, the easy-to-read novel by author Carly Wiggins. Follow June's journey as she confronts doubt and disappointment with God after the loss of her sister. Through candid conversations and heavenly visions, June discovers a closer relationship with God. This story of faith and surrender is perfect for believers seeking spiritual growth. Find more by searching www.carlywigginsauthor.com. Well, right now, since I'm doing with the podcast, the objective of the podcast is to educate people that grief is, is something that we deal with, but we don't talk about. But it's important to speak about it, especially within the church community within the body of Christ. You know, people do internalize a lot and we're told to just pray. We're told mm-hmm. to just read our Bible. Uh, not many pastors are equipped to handle losses and how people go through them and how each person has a unique grief journey. And none of those journeys are going to be alike. And everyone is validated in the way they process it. Yeah. And God knows that, and we should just open up that forum to people to express themselves and to be there for each other. And so I do talk about those things in the podcast, focusing on the Word of God, and 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 God has been leading and directing every episode. And I was wondering, you know, how specific I was going to get into the different types of grief, and God just kept leading me to His Word and just focusing on that and using that as the structure and sharing Uh my personal experiences with grief and what I've gone through, whether it be church hurt, loss of loved ones, um, whether it be even just trusting in someone and then them betraying within the church, just different scenarios like that. We don't talk about it. People don't share their experiences, but if I share, then maybe people will feel okay in how they respond to uh, different experiences and heal from it or closer to the Lord. As you're talking about grief, it's like it's like that topic that we never hope happens to us, so we try not to think about it much. But then when it happens, we're unprepared to deal with it, right? Yes. So thinking about your personal grief story, what would you tell the that Lydia who was going through all of those things of, of grief, who you are today, what would be your message to that person? That God is there. That yeah. God knows. Even if people can't understand, God knows. God sees it all. And God is going to see you through it. I would tell my younger self that God is going to see you through it. And he had. And it's okay to cry. And it's okay if people around you don't get it. Don't bottle that in. Find an outlet to release it. And and, and if I were to go back and and I, like, for example, when my mother had passed away and she passed away from cancer and no one else in my class had gone through that type of loss where they had lost a parent through cancer and even going back to school it was hard it was an adjustment and i could tell people didn't know how to respond to me so i felt the need 
to quickly recover and to quickly get on with it to show that I was okay so that they could be okay. And many yeah. times that happens. We we don't allow ourselves to process fully uh, just because we're so aware of everyone around us and how uncomfortable they are and just makes us even feel more uncomfortable. So we, we pretend we're okay and show that we're okay. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was overcoming from my drug addiction and we were working through a, a part of the ministry that was saying, it's called ultimate journey. And basically you look through all the things that happened in your life and kind of talk to God about it. Like, how did this happen? God, how did you let this happen? Kind of like this. And I, I I just remember like it was yesterday when I realized God was there, well, and, you know, divorces in my families, you know, my addiction, other things that, that happened in my life, things that I caused as well. When you understand that God was there, you were not alone. No matter how horrible things were in your life, no matter what happened to you, God was there. And it was not just as much as your heart breaks during the grief, his heart breaks during the grief. Yes. You know, that that was another great thing for me to understand that people ask this, God, how could you let this happen? It hurt him too. You know, yeah. we think about him being so far away and he's so busy with all these other things. You no, know, he hurts for you too. And I think this is grief. It's a huge importance. We need to to deal with this. So thank you for having a podcast related to grief and overcoming this as well. Well, for the glory of God, it's all his doing. That, that's my next question, the glory of God. So how can you give glory th- to God through the grief process? So we know we're created for God's glory. So if we're created for oh. God's glory and we're called to suffer and we're going to go through many moments of suffering, God's glory should never be diminished in those moments. God's glory should emanate even stronger in those moments because we're called to have joy in our yeah. trials and tribulations. We're called to be of good cheer because Jesus has overcome the world. And so we know that. And so that to me is a big focus to me. So when we're going through those through those moments and just trusting that God has purpose and pain, mm-hmm. then we can see the glory of God. When we just ask God, you know, I'm I'm in I'm in a bad place, but I don't want to diminish your glory. I want people to still see you through mm-hmm. me, no matter what I'm going through. When we desire that, God gives that ability. And then that's what draws people to us, those who don't know the Lord. Oh wow, I want what they have. I know what they're going through. Yet they have such peace. They have such joy. And then they will come and ask the questions when they see that, when we live as that example. So that to me is really important. You were talking about the verse where Jesus was speaking to Peter, follow my sheep or feed my sheep. Can you you read that verse for us? Because I was going in the other direction. I was thinking about Jesus, you know, getting the, the, bringing the lost ones home, but you kind of went a different direction. So if, if you could read that verse for our audience, that would be excellent. Sure. So I'm reading from John chapter 21, uh, verses 15 through to 19. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. So this is your mission. Your mission is to love his sheep, tend his sheep, feed his sheep, you know, and not just your mission. I'm going to, I'm going to go out there and say that this is all of our mission, right? We all have this as believers. It's not just the missionaries. It's not just the pastors. It's every believer. This is what I love to preach. If you are a follower of Jesus, where is he going? Follow him where he's going and you're going to end up in the same place and he's going to the lost people. And so if you're truly following Jesus, the way that it says, according to the Bible, Jesus is going to the lost people. And I'm going to bet that you should be too. So thank you so much for sharing that that verse. It's wow. So, so good. A little bit more about the podcast itself. So how many episodes have you released so far? 
I believe I've done 14 episodes so far. 14 episodes. Okay. Yes. And do you have any prepared episodes coming out soon that we should be watching for? Um, hopefully in the next couple of days. I don't have a fixed schedule. I try to do two or three a week, but it's as the Lord leads. So whenever he's ready and ready to tell me what direction to go, and where what I'm to share in that episode, I know yep. that I will be going in through a series of praying for people uh, on some of these episodes, the various types of grief communities, whether people are hurt by, you know, whether it be hurt by loss of life or loss of jobs, loss of whatever situation they're going through, different types of grief communities, I will definitely be praying for it some point. So, yeah. Yeah. And I have one more question here. What would be your advice to someone who's struggling with grief and looking for some spiritual support or some guidance through this? I would tell them to trust in God and pray to ask God to provide wisdom and discernment as to who they can share with, who they can open up with. Having a safe space is so important, but God can direct us to the right people and Uh we need to feel comfortable with who we share with, but it's important to share. And so we need to get that out. So I would definitely ask people to pray about it. You know, I would, uh, I would tell them God knows and God knows who so you're good. going to bring into your life to share that. Rely way. on the Holy Spirit. You know, I think Amen. that's, we can go a long yeah. way in life. I was telling my wife that today. We can go a long way in life if we just rely on the Holy Spirit to do and, things. You know? yes. We had someone on the podcast a few days ago from Sweden. Our, our audience will remember this. So he was telling his testimony where he he struggled with with some things in his life. He was in prison and after prison, he went to a church. And he was telling his testimony, like, hey, God saved me from this. And he kind of felt rejected. Like people were like, you don't belong here. And we had to find that space because you're you're so right. We need to use wisdom. We need to share because we're giving God glory through it. But also people may judge us. So what can you tell us? Where's the middle ground? I think it's following the Holy Spirit. But what else can you say about that, that issue? It's hard to find a safe space, but we can always be a safe space with the Holy Spirit. So that's really important. Um, So we can't control other people having judgment. That's Sally Mm -hmm. going to be there. But when we go through those experiences, I know for me, I look at them as cautionary tales. Okay, I'm not going to be like that because that's not of the Lord. And like, Lord, help me to, because God wastes nothing in our pain. Everything we go through has purpose. And for me, I just look at those experiences And say, okay, God, let me learn from that and not be that for others. So if I had to go through that, I wouldn't want to put that pain on anyone else. And if I can mitigate that for someone else, then great. Help me to be that safe space. And I, you know, sometimes we don't know what hurts until we hear it. And when people say it to us, oh, wow, I didn't expect to get hurt by that. Okay, now I know not to say that, not to use those words. Because they can be triggers and we're not even aware of triggers. So... Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Melania, for, for sharing all the things that you did today. I want to encourage our audience to check out your podcast, Love My Sheep, on all streaming platforms. It is out there. And anything else you want to share with us today, or how can we find you personally on social media as well? I, I don't have any active social media profiles currently, but you can definitely look up my podcast on all uh, podcast platforms. If you just search Love My Sheep, um, it's under Miss Lydia as the host, and that's what I use as my host name. Um, so that's where you can find me for now. I'm sure a website will be launching in the near future, and I will uh, definitely indicate that in future episodes when that happens. So um, the only thing I have to share is, um, you know, I I know everyone's going through something, and it's hard, and it's hard to even okay. open up and share, but God knows. God will take care of everything. And just trust him in the process and just know that he wants you to be well. He wants you to live for him. And so, and he wants you to live for him fully. So when we trust in that process, he will get us through it. Thanks again. And if I can have you end our time together with a prayer, I would greatly appreciate that. Sure. Gracious Heavenly Lord, we thank you, O God, for this time that we have. Thank you, O Lord, for Dallas and for the podcast platform that he has. And thank you for the work that he is doing in Brazil, oh God, as a missionary, I pray that you'll be with him and his family. I pray that you will bless them, encourage them, guide them, and protect them, oh Lord, and lead them in the path that you have outlined for them 
in where they are at this moment, oh God. And I thank you, O Lord, for this time to share about my podcast, oh God, and for you to get all the glory in everything that we do, O Lord, for this podcast is created for your glory. I pray that you would just provide peace and comfort to anyone who is grieving that may be tuning in, help them to draw closer to you and help them to feel your presence and your love through everything that they're going through. And I thank you for who you are and that you're sovereign. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You've just listened to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. With your host, Pastor Chris Busher. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast was recorded live in studio with final editing made before uploading. Subscribe today to Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast on iTunes or Google Play. For more fantastic daily content, visit Pastor Chris Busher online via Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Don't miss the next episode on Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast.